Greetings, everyone. Really excited to be launching this report today. As Praveen touched upon, uh, automation has evolved significantly over the last few years, and enterprises also have become a lot more deliberate and informed in their strategy to adopt automation. Enterprises today are looking to enhance the most critical system of record or SOR applications to make them more productive. At the same time, they're also looking to make uh, their SORs more integrated and intelligent, creating system of intelligence or SOI to derive decision automation. Enterprises are further looking to build interactive interfaces to power up SOR or SOI to become systems of experience or SOX or a seamless employee experience, customer experience, and partner experience. The full stack of automation technologies is powering enterprises today uh, at all these three levels. The automation technologies are spread across the four layers of Discover, which is about identifying and reimagining the inefficient processes. Digitize, which is concerned with converting unstructured data into structured format. Integrate, which is uh, uh, which in, in includes uh, assessing uh, in, uh, information from multiple enterprise applications, including legacy, modern, and custom built applications. And finally, enhance is all about providing higher order value through seamless and interactive experiences. These automation technology layers are powered by AI enabled intelligence layer, and all of this is built on top of the next gen infrastructure. So this holistic framework being adopted by enterprises today is what we're referring to as hyper-intelligent automation. Vodafone is a good case in point to put all of this into perspective. Uh, Vodafone started their automation journey using RPA to enhance their back office system of record applications within finance, HR, and customer service. As the automation of SOR applications gained success, they started leveraging more and more AI, ML, and IDP for actionable insights from the documents. Next, they introduced system of experience applications using low-code, no-code to build newer modern apps aligned to both internal employees as well as customers. They also started leveraging conversational AI-powered chatbots to really allow the customer with faster query resolution and self-service scenarios. So this is how Vodafone has been able to effectively leverage the full stack of automation technology right from their SORs, SOIs, and find the powering of the SOX or system of experience. Aligned to this new framework, automation today represents a sizable market opportunity of more than $300 billion. There are more than 1,400 platform players today vying for a share of this action. And these are spread across the multiple technology areas within the HI stack. It's interesting to note that almost 50% of these platforms are from outside North America, including EMEA, APAC, and LATAM. And given the number of platforms available, there has been massive consolidation and m and action within the space. It's fascinating to note that we have witnessed more than 80 acquisitions since the start of 2021. And majority of these acquisitions have been done for technology augmentation. And finally, the VCs and PEs continue to be super active in this space. Uh, and there have been more than $15 billion of VCP money which has been poured into this fast growing space since the last two years. In addition to the acceleration from last year, uh, there are many macroeconomic and business drivers at play today that are propelling the adoption of automation among enterprises. While up till now, the interest rates were at an all time low due to COVID, the inflation shot through the roof and reached 8.5% back in March. The US Federal Reserve was forced to increase the interest rate in March. And in fact, the rates were high the second time around uh, a few weeks back in May and they're now at a 0.75 to 1%. This is the biggest rise in borrowing costs since 2000, and this is expected to further uh, be hiked up up till 2.8% uh, uh, by 2023. So this is putting immense pressure on enterprises who will be almost pushed to adopt automation in order to drive focus on profitability. As per our analysis, the Fortune enterprises who have a high focus on automation are able to grow their profit per employees by seven times as compared to those that are not investing into automation today. Linked to this, uh, uh, this trend is the ongoing Russia-Ukraine crisis. Uh, when the war started back in Feb of this year, there was a notion that this would end very soon, uh, very much similar to how the COVID crisis also started back in 2020. Three months later, and uh, there is still no end to the war, uh, in fact, uh, this has clearly become a more longer term, more permanent situation. So while automation was the front runner to really provide business continuity and resiliency during the COVID situation, uh, what we see is that automation really has stepped up again to ensure anti-fragility for enterprises during the ongoing war. The great resignation wave from the last year has evolved into this new avatar of the great reshuffle. A large portion of the employees were actually quitting. Uh, they're quitting for better work profiles, are they quitting for better work-life balance and better culture? Hence, it has become 
extremely important and imperative for enterprises to be able to provide that enhanced experience to their employees in order to not only retain them but also attract newer uh, talent at the same time. And this is where automation is again playing a major role in ensuring a superior employee experience. So there are clearly a lot of macroeconomic forces at play today, which are more longer term in nature and automation has a major role to play across all of these macro trends due to which it will become a true business and technology imperative in 2022 and beyond. While there is a sizable opportunity to be realized, uh, the platform players on the other hand are struggling to seize this opportunity. Most of the automation platforms are not generating cash yet and in fact have minimal focus on profitability with negative EBITDAs on their balance sheets. In fact, we analyzed the 15 leading public platform companies and found that they have more than $7.5 billion in cumulative debt on their books. And almost 40% of these platforms also had negative EBITDA. So all of these are mind-boggling numbers. And with the interest rates expected to go up further, their ability to raise money will be constrained as well. On the other hand, the enterprise customers have become far more informed and deliberate in their adoption of automation, which is also adding to pressure on the platforms. Even the buy centers of customers are evolving and moving beyond the Earthway line of business functions to IT orgs and global business services or GBS. Platforms today have not done a good job at targeting these newer buy centers. In addition, most platform companies continue to have a very transactional relationship with their customers, and there is minimal focus on growing the average revenue per customer for their marquee customers. Esker is a good case in point where they have done well to acquire more than 11,000 global customers on the back of their specialized focus on AP and AR automation, but their average revenue per customer is uh, abysmally low at around $12,000 per customer. Going to all of these stresses, consequently, the valuations of some of the leading platform companies today have witnessed a sharp plunge since the last 12 months. So most platforms are uh, struggling to scale, hence a major strategy reset is required for platforms to win in this extremely dynamic and competitive space. We've been tracking the SaaS companies since the last more than 10 to 15 years, uh, interspersed with our in-depth knowledge on the automation platforms, along with two years of COVID-19 innovation. All of this has sort of gone into this robust playbook with four broad strategy levels that platforms should consider. First uh, is to build uh, to power system of experience or SOX. So platforms need to focus on helping customers and powering up their systems of experience workflows in order to provide seamless CX and EX. This can be achieved by plugging gaps in the product portfolio and ramping the product capabilities through a very strong acquisition playbook. There are essentially two main drivers for uh, acquisitions. One is that it reduces the time to market and reduces the risk of failure. Secondly, as we discussed, there are ample assets available at very attractive valuations today, which makes it very attractive to buy rather than build new complex tech areas. Once the platforms have the right product in place, there is immense need to build hyper-specialized solutions, including both horizontal or vertical edge solutions on top of the product. As I had iterated, the, the ideal automation uh, uh, stack should be built on the next-gen infrastructure, which implies having a cloud-first approach. And this is typically a five to seven year transformation journey that companies need to undertake from a product alliances, go to market, and even a customer success standpoint. In addition, platforms also need to be creative in leveraging the global locations effectively to have the right talent in place to accelerate both the product roadmap and drive innovation. The next pillar to a successful platform is uh, adding value to existing customers and also identifying newer customers, especially the ignored customer segments. Today, platforms are struggling to add true value to their existing customers due to multiple reasons. Most platforms have seen rapid growth in their customer base and today have very transactional relationships with the long tail of customers. There is minimal focus on scaling customers and growing the average revenue per customer. So platforms need to have a high focus on first identifying the top marquee customers, which have a high potential to scale and then build an in-depth understanding of some of these customers for suitable cross-sell and upsell opportunities. Platforms also have immense opportunity to target the ignored customer segments, such as the new buy centers, which I spoke about earlier, and also uh, unlocking greater value from the newer geographies, such as APAC. The third key pillar is investing into ecosystem, uh, which includes building a best-in-class partner strategy and a strong developer program. Majority of the leading platforms today are unable to engage effectively with the partners or service providers, and hence are relying majorly on direct selling, which hampers their scale. This is happening because there is a wide plethora of partners available today uh, to choose from, right from the larger service providers or GSIs to 
mid tier service providers hbmcs bpo bpm firms and even new are born in the automation players and this makes it super confusing for platforms to pick and choose from and on the other hand most of these partners are also engaging with multiple automation platforms which further adds to the complexity hence how does a platform really ensure that they focus and prioritize the right set of partners and how does a platform really ensure that the partners are furthering their case in front of the customers vis-a-vis -vis their compete platforms also need to at the same time focus on building a strong third party developer ecosystem globally by clearly articulating their value prop and focusing on developer evangelization programs and finally the fourth uh, one is around the go to market engine all of these levers that we spoke about need to be augmented through a very strong go to market motion which is geared up for rapid scale and which ensures differentiation pricing is an important component uh, and subscription pricing is the way to go especially in a cloud first world however the pricing models and the metrics used is some something that needs to be identified based on the uh, tech offering and the platform focus itself bundling has emerged as a preferred tool to ensure that the platforms are able to push seamless adoption of different tech components and also ensure cross sell and upsell opportunities and then the right go to market structure is again something that needs to evolve depending on the focus area and the evolution of the platform so these are the broad contours of the playbook of success for platforms uh, we are joined today by three experts and stalwarts from the automation space and we can go into more detailing into each of these facets during a panel discussion so with that uh, i hand it over to you praveen we can kick start the panel discussion